Two. You've heard of Noel Gallagher's with us this morning. How are you, darling? You're all good? I'm good, and you? Okay, yeah, we're yeah. going to play some music. We've got lots to talk to you about. Lovely right. jacket, by the way. Oh, that's, yeah, I've said that, yeah. Yeah. I didn't, yeah. I didn't make it myself. Got lots of, uh, lots of pockets. A lot of pockets, very lot useful. Pockets, Slight yeah. utility jacket, I would call that. Lots of pockets for sweets <laughs> and things. Ah, uh, oh, speaking uh, of which. <laughs> words only idiots listen to morning radio <laughs> it's a pleasure to welcome noel gallagher into the studio this morning hello darling do you get your qu- things quoted back to you all the time uh yeah unfortunately <laughs> usually in interviews around so you said in 2003 and just like i remember a german guy said to me once in 2000 he said ah oh, so the last time i interviewed you was in uh, 1994 you told me you were going to be the biggest songwriter of all time <laughs> I was like, right, and he said, so tell me, what happened? Oh! <laughs> and I was like, OK, right, let's get on with it. Cheeky. It's not the greatest opening to an interview, no. that, is it? From, no. you know... Germans are Scene bold, setting. So. They, yes, they can be, <laughs> they can be. Uh, good morning to all our lovely German <laughs> listeners right now. Uh, you mentioned sweets, um, and you'll, I'd be glad to know that Flo, who works on the show next door, who is a brilliant... She does the most amazing research. She goes deep. Where right. we have in old. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow, wow. No way, the Australian The Australian chocolate, which apparently you love. Uh, You've got some Tim Tams there. You've got something called a perky, which I thought was called a perky nana. So Tim Tams (laughs) are, they're penguins. Right, right? That's what they are, masquerading. uh, uh, But they're great. The violet crumble is uh, its a crunchy light. That's what that oh, is. Oh, hello. Yeah, r- really I like good. the line on the side bit. It's the way it shatters that yeah. matters. Now um, this, but this, right. the cherry ripe, okay. is possibly the greatest confectionery thing that's ever been invented by a human. Oh. It's, it's like a cherry-flavoured bounty. Oh, hello. Yeah, indeed. Oh, hello. You see, I love a cherry like liqueur. A perky nana. Yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, I'm hoping to meet a few of those on tour, <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> um, I know not, I'm not sure what a perky nana is, but I reckon it's banana. I reckon it's nana. Nana. That's what it is. It's, oh, ban- see, banana that's flavored what it is. tuba. Not right. a perky nana. Good morning to any perky nanas here, right. listening. A raspberry twister. You've got okay, all of that. that. That doesn't sound great. Yeah, okay. This is right, not the Erling cool. Haaland no. uh, kale and, and milk. A, and a is chocolate it? fish. <laughs> Chocolate fish. I mean, breakfast is not complete without a chocolate fish. Oh, God, we'll be tucking into well, those. Thank you very, thank you very much Yo, for these. Isn't she good? Did you get from that from that shop in the? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah they got them on. Oh, every time I go to the dry shop. cleaners, I come out of there and I'm like, you know what? I might just go in there and buy a thousand cherry ripes. You do, but you don't look like you eat a thousand cherry ripes. No, but, no. no, but I do. <laughs> but you do. But you do. Get, wait, do you look after yourself? Do you train? I do. do yeah, I do, I do. I haven't been going to the gym re- uh, so much recently, but yeah, I do. When I'm when I'm when I'm on it, I do go to the gym regularly. Uh, you, I mean, you have to. The older that you get, or you just you just end oh, up, yeah. you just end up looking like an old rock star. Um, <laughs> but it's, so, it's it's amazing how addictive that kind of thing becomes. It, it really it, is. Yeah, I mean, I'm I, in, I, I, I never went to the gym until I was forty. Yeah, I never. I was not interested, and then kind of, I find if I can put the gear on. I'm going. Okay. That that to me that's to me that's that's more difficult than actually doing the hour and a half or whatever it is. As long as I can put the little socks on and the trainers and the ill-fitting top <laughs> and the uh, the questionable shorts with the uh, with the spandex thing on them to protect your hamstrings. If I can do that, I'm going to the gym. Then you're going to the gym. Going I to the gym. don't think I have ever seen photographs of Noel Gallagher in well, workout this is why, gear. This is why. Because I will rather spend a small fortune to put a gym in my house than go through the embarrassment of being in a public gym. Because, frankly, if I ever get photographed coming out of the gym oh, in gym gear, it. it's over. With a bit of a sweat on. It's over. Oh, it's no. just no, nobody, You're needs, absolutely nobody right. needs to see it. Nobody will ever see it. It's never been seen. It's why I'm still here on Radio 2 promoting yet another fabulous single. We're going to play the singles very, very soon. Uh, we'll play Bowie first and more chat with Noel.
DB, let's dance. Noel Gallagher's with us this morning, 8.45. Noel Gallagher has just elevated himself to God. Now I know he likes cherry ripes. Going to New Zealand later this year. Can't wait for a cherry ripe, says Joe in Bristol. Cherry ripe, the greatest chocolate ever. What have you started? <laughs> has Noel uh, bitten the opposite corners of a Tim Tam and used it as a straw, says 175 on the text. Oh, no, I haven't no, done that. Have you not no, heard no, of that? No, no. But it's, not, it's a little known thing, though. Aust- Australians... Oh, the Australian Cadburys have got they must have they've got their own they've got their own line of chocolate and when we first started going there you know, we were going to the shop looking for cigs or something, and I was like, what if it's that? Look at that. And uh, I've got into it, and it's great, but there's a shop just around the corner from the BBC um, which sells Australian sweets. It's not an Australian shop, but it sells Australian sweets, like I was saying to them before. And every time I go in the dry cleaners, Perkins dry cleaners, best dry cleaners. Uh, <laughs> um, they, uh, I always have to go in and get a bit, but um, my kids love it. And I love it. It's amazing. There you go. There it's, you it's, go. it's one of the main the, reasons to go to Australia. The listeners love you. One of it. Um, D- David Bowie, you're playing David Bowie there. You must have met quite a few times. I met him a couple of times. Yeah, I, I met him. Uh, I met him at Jules Holland in the nineties. But I went to see him one night at Wembley Arena, and um, Morrissey was supporting him. And uh, just before, just as Morrissey finished, a guy came down the seats and said. Would you like to go and meet David? And I was like, David? And he went, David. And I was like, and I, did, for, I didn't register for a minute. And I was like, oh, David. So go into his dressing room and he's putting on putting on makeup with the, in the mirror. And I, I, to this day, I can't remember uh, what was said, but a picture then surfaced of me saying something to him and he was laughing hysterically. And I remember our kid going... Uh, what were you saying to Bowie there? I was like, we're slagging you off. <laughs> you <laughs> but he was he was such a dude that. and oh. I actually emailed me a couple of times just before um like a year before his death, uh, after we did a thing at the Brits for him and he was just saying, you know, keep writing and you know, uh, like a bit of a you know great advice from one of the greatest, you know, like keep writing and you gotta you gotta keep going and all that kind of thing. It was amazing. Um, but yeah, he's one of the, he's one of the greats. He's up there with Lennon for me. No, he, uh, you're you're absolutely right, and I love that. What amazing advice! And you are pretty prolific with writing. Mm. You you say that you like to write, you know, fifteen I minutes do. a day. Yeah, I do. yeah. I, I don't I, I don't sit down and write. Right today, I'm going to write a song, or I'm going to start this project today. I do it every day, and just I've always got quite a few songs on the go that are kind of in states of semi being semi finished. And, uh, yeah, I chip away every day and then go about and do whatever else I've got to do. Um, but, no, it's, it is my... I'm lucky, I'm privileged enough for it to be my hobby, you know what I mean? If, if I <clears throat> if I wasn't doing this, I don't, know what, I, don't, I don't know what else I'd be doing. I've got, you know, I can't drive, I don't collect anything, particularly... I don't, I don't, it's my hobby, it's amazing. Have a minute, you can't drive, you don't... I've you never don't. had a drive... Well, I've had one driving lesson in, in the 90s, no. and, the, and the woman who gave me the driving lesson, right, I was driving around a housing estate in Slough, right, and she said to me, <laughs> and if you just indicate and pull over here, and I pulled over, and she got out of the car, she said, I'll be back in a minute. She came out with her mum, she, put, she drove me to her, to her house... And my mum was doing a picture of me in the street in Slough, right? And this was before mobile phones, and it was like a snappy snaps camera. And then the local comprehensive bell went, and they all came out, right? And I'm in a red Nissan Micra, Micra. with a massive, great big triangle on the top of it with an L. As all these kids are coming out of Slough, this is the, at the height of Oasis mania, right? And, uh, and I was like, never, never again am I getting in a car. It didn't stop me buying a few cars, but I've... Um, I've never, I've never fancied it. I've got a chauffeur. Yeah, OK, lovely. He's outside. Big Ali be listening. Oh, Get Big Al. <laughs> what a man Big Al is. Bless him. You don't make him wear a hat, do you? Like Parker. <sighs> I mean, I should do. <laughs> I should do really. I should make him, but no, 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 good. no, no. I don't. That's no. A he wears, he wears, he wears his own clothes, and uh, we drive around incognito. You know, it's great. Oh, fantastic. I bet he's like a therapist. He must hear it all. Bless him. Let's talk about new music. Uh, we're about to play for the first time anywhere. Council Skies, mm. brand new single from your brand new album, which is coming. Talk to me about Council Skies and and the creation of of this. Well, record. I started writing it in Ibiza. Yeah. A couple of summers ago, and um, I. It, I, I got to the bit where it mentions the hook, what people will hear in a minute. And um, 
it kind of always fell down at that point. And then one, when I got back to London, I was finishing it off and I was looking for the bit that would make it all work as a song. And there was a book on my coffee table and it's by an artist called Pete McKee. <clears throat> it's, not a, it's not a book with words in it. He's, a, he's an illustrator, painter. And um, this book was called Council Skies. And as I got, and I glanced at it, and it's like, Council Skies, yes, that's going to fit. And it fit, in the, it fit in the bit of the song. And the song's got quite a bossa nova beat because it was written in Ibiza and, you know, I was feeling it. And, and then I started to rewrite the words and it's about young love on a council estate. So I called Pete and said, can I use this title? And he said, of course. And um, Council Skies is a particular colour of blue that he mixes when he's, when he's painting the sky as his background for these paintings that he does of people on council estates. And I just thought it was just thought it was just such a magical thing and I ended up calling the the album Council Skies and um, it's, I'd be interested to see what people think of this because it's not it's not like anything else on the record the record's very eclectic okay. um, so of the two of the three songs that have been out so far this is another one that's completely different so um, we'll we get go. instant reaction yeah, 88 291 let us know what you think here it is Council Skies Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds <laughs> Council Skies, Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds. Instant reaction, Noel. The Bossa Nova gives the intro 60s theme tune vibe. Lovely chords. It's different and I love it. That's from Johanna in Cheshire. Uh, Noel, legend, love the new song, 377 on the text. Another amazing tune, says Charlie. The man can do no wrong. Another tune. 399 on the text. Oh, thank the you people very much. are happy. Thank you, thank you very the much. The people are happy. Um, how long do they have to wait for the album, by the way? June 2nd. June 2nd, great. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, it's very frustrating. It's been, I mean, I finished it what, seven months ago. Okay. But as I'm a, 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 an independent artist, it takes ages to set these things up around the world, so it, so it all comes out on the same day. But um, it's, uh, it's a good one. It is a it good is a one. Good I listened to it on a double-decker bus going through Crawley yesterday. Well, that's, that's, that, um, that's where it'll sound its best, <laughs> I'd have thought. That's it. It's going to sound good going through Crawley. <laughs> yeah, it's going to sound amazing. <laughs> well, we're done in a moment. Uh, the last for you now, there she goes. What's this song say to you, Noel? Oh, it reminds me of... Uh, just been in the northwest in the 80s and uh, spent a lifetime trying to b- beat this song. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. I think you uh, up on a par. Say. I don't know, Lee wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> the last, there she goes. More with Noel coming up after the news. Thank you very much, Tina. Uh, much excitement in here. <laughs> Noel has realised that that cherry ripe is what? Is well, there's, a, there's, a, there's the normal standard cherry ripe and there's yeah. a new one which I've never seen that says cherry ripe double dipped. Oh, oh Lord. Get that in my news bulletin. I mean, oh. I am going to savour that this evening <laughs> while watching hopefully Man United get beat by Seville. Oh, gosh. <laughs> They're playing seagulls at the weekend as well. You too. Right. Noel Gallagher with us on BBC Radio 2 this morning. Uh, loads of questions coming in, Noel. I'm okay. going to do a bit of quick fire. Uh, what's Noel's favourite ice cream, says Mia, who's 13, from Ringwood? Oh, oh, there's a thing you get in weight trolls called a knobbly bobbly. <gasps> Hello. <clears throat> yeah. Knobbly bobbly? Yeah. So they come in They come in a box of six and they're like, uh, my kids got me into them. It's not like when your kids are growing up, you just yeah. eat, end up eating kids' food. <laughs> uh, they're knobbly bobblies. They're, they're, uh, uh, they are... Just Google them. Okay. You will not be disappointed. Mia. These things are amazing. Dig yourself out a knobbly bobbly. There is a photo. Thank you, there Jamie, you on the socials for that. Oh, there's uh, Jordan. Thank you, darling. That is a knobbly bobbly. I'm liking the look of that. Uh, my question to Noel. When the film is made about Oasis, uh, which is inevitable, which actor will play you, says Lee? Oh, I mean, I'm, I've, I'm, I'm unique looking, <laughs> to say the least. I think they might have to uh, AI it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. What about our kid, your kid, Liam? Uh, you could play Liam. They might have to AI him as well, I said. Well, they're doing that on the internet now. I need to hear those, oh, oasis, I know. those, those oasis things. Where That's they, where they, bonkers. Yeah. What are well, your feelings about that, by the way? Well, they can make it sound like 
Liam, they can't make it sound like me. There you go. You see, you can't, they cannot reproduce you. I cannot you. be reproduced. Um, can you ask Noel if he was in the gift shop at the Houston Space Centre a few years ago? Yes. I got my photo <laughs> taken with him. Somehow he looks like a cardboard cutout. No one believes me that it's really him, says yeah. 771 on the text. Well, when you do point the camera at me, I do stand very still. <laughs> People are like, there's no way you can keep that, that pose up. But yeah, I was. we went to NASA to see... Uh, I don't, we were in Houston on a day off yeah. and all went there. Uh, I, mean, I don't know if anybody's ever been, but it is amazing. And we, were all, <laughs> we were all like tourists in the gift shop buying NASA bomber jackets that <laughs> I still got, I've still got it somewhere. That you've never worn? No, never. Oh. I mean, why would you? <laughs> I got to go there with the Inspiral carpets when they released Saturn oh. V, oh. which is like, for the Ozone, quite a random <laughs> reference there. That's where I interviewed you wearing that terrible right. hat, yeah. remember? Yeah. Oh, lordy. Rolling Stones, Jumping Jack, Flash. I've, you've hung out with the Stones quite a bit, haven't you, Noel? They'll come go with yeah, us yeah, this yeah. morning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're a good bunch, aren't they? They're the Rolling Stones, man. I mean, I spent New Year's Eve once with Keith Richards. Oh, and, my uh, goodness me. Do was... you remember much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it, was, it, was, it, was really, it was only a few years back, and he said, he said, the, he said one of the funniest things to me where because I know his kids, right, because his yeah. kids are all racist fans, and we all had to be staying at the same hotel. And I said, oh, come and meet Dad. So Keith's at the bar dressed like a pirate. He's got, like, three belts on, and, like, a sword, you know, and he's got a parrot on his shoulder. And, and, and it's because about, oh, Dad, it's not only two around. He's like, nah, you're still around, are you? And I was like, yes, Emily And he said, one question I've always wanted to ask you. And I was like, go on. He said, I won't use the word because it's offensive. He said, who's the biggest, your singer or mine? And I, and I was like, well, as your singer wrote some of the greatest lyrics of all time, I'm going to say mine. And he went, I thought as much. <laughs> <laughs> that is an amazing conversation. Yeah. Oh, I love it. You do tell the best, honestly, <laughs> the best stories. We do have good chats off air as well. There are some amazing stories that we can't share on air. Uh, Noel, people are tuning in from all over the world this morning. Listener in Mexico has got in touch. His name's Antonio. He sent in an email in Spanish. It's been translated. Uh, we think that he says he's seen you three times in Boston, Mexico City and Dallas. And it says you're one of the best songwriters of all time and is very excited about your new music. Oh, thank you very there much. There we go. Thank I've you very beautifully much. translated there. Um, Noel, if you were to change your name, what would you change it to, says L. Neil. There we go. Simple. Easy. Neil, just nice to cause... To, yeah, it wouldn't be too much. You'd be like, you know, easy enough to remember when you get, you know, <laughs> onset early dementia. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's talk about the new album, uh, which I said I listened to on the, the top of a double-decker bus going through Crawley yesterday. Um, so tell me about writing it, the process, the feelings. A lot of people have said, you know, listening to it is quite reflective. Yeah. You, you know. Well, I wasn't... I'm in. Uh, I got back off tour in 2019. I was planning on having 2020 off completely. I just moved into a new house. and I was planning on spending a bit more time at home with kids and all that. And, of course, COVID happened. And uh, we were all... So 2020, I just spent... Uh, I think artists, or the ones that I know anyway, were the people that navigated their way through it the best because I just wrote my way through it, you know. And um, all the songs were written in that first lockdown in the nine months, and it's reflective, I guess, because none of us had ever lived through a pandemic before. We didn't know how do we get out of it, how we got into it, and there was all the crazy conspiracy theories and people fighting over toilet roll and all, remember all that kind of thing and um, yeah I just started to look back and uh, it was um, it was a funny old time but so yeah so the songs I mean th th there isn't there isn't an overriding concept to the record, there's, there's a couple of songs that are personal which will become obvious when you hear them but there's you know it's quite anthemic and some of it, it it's, it's quite eclectic there's nothing quite like Pretty Boy on it. There's um, people are saying it's my best record. But, well, my mum's saying that. And then again, she would. Oh, should I think it? You know, I think it's the best record you've ever made. Oh. And I'm like, come, can we put that on the back of the album, mum? And you should. I'm in a big perverted <laughs> Can we put that on the ad? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Go ahead. There are some beautiful harmonies, incredible string arrangements oh, in yeah. here as well. Oh yeah, Rosie. Oh yeah, and it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't a, it wasn't an idea early on to have strings on it, but as 
as the song started to take shape, we put, you know, we, you, can, you can get these simulated strings out on a keyboard that sound like real strings, but they're not. We started to add strings to it here and there, and then, and then was like, okay, we need to get real strings. But I know this girl string arranger called Rosie Danvers, who's worked with me for years, and she just gets what I do, and she loves working with me, and I love working with her. And we'd send off the the kind of stems to it, and honestly, these string arrangements, particularly for Dead to the World, when that when that came back, I was like, oh my god. Um, but yeah, the string arrangements are amazing. There's a track on it called Open the Door, See What You Find, which is, honestly, it's like every single song from the 60s condensed into one into one tune, but the string arrangement is incredible. I mean, it presents its own problems now. It's like I've got to kind of try and reproduce it on tour without an orchestra because I can't afford one oh, because yeah. you people there don't buy enough records oh. and you stream them. I know what's happening, but the cassette is coming back, Noel. Well, uh, which it's going to save the music business. <laughs> the cassette. It's going to save the music oh, business. Oh, can you take a small gang of strings on the? Uh, we, can do it, we can do it on effect. keyboards. We, yeah, we, we can do it on keyboards. Oh. Yeah, but it's not. It's not quite the same as having a load of oh. uh, foxy chicks on stage with cellos. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> there is something very saucy about string uh, well, players, I have to say. Tell me about Just it. Just watching yeah. them, the way they move, it's so fluid through their bodies. I always say to my string set, get yeah. rid of all the geezers. We yeah. don't need any of those. <laughs> Just one. Just bring the, bring the, bring oh, the ladies. Oh, there'll be a lot of uh, string it is sexist, players this I know, morning. but that's what made me what I am. There I'm we sorry. go. That's all right. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> that's your opinion. That's a lovely thing. The great thing is you're going out on tour, my darling. Oh. Um, you're going to the States as well, aren't you? June 2nd, um, yeah. June 2nd. Okay, so you're doing that as the warm-up. And then... <laughs> <laughs> doing a tour with Garbage, actually, which yeah, is going to be fun. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Shirley and the gang. Yeah. Um, but then playing back over here, you've got some amazing dates across the summer. Yeah. Um, don't, and don't ask me to name them. I no, no, don't. Idea. I've got them all here in front of Within me. Within Shore Park and okay. all that. Okay, yes. Yeah, so you've got all the lovely summer dates, uh, like Penfest, that's happening in July. You're in Nottingham uh, at the Crystal Palace Bowl. Brighton on the beach. Yes, that's That'll right. That'll be yeah. a brilliant one. Yeah. Um, um, uh, Somerset, I'm actually Manchester. Doing a gig. I'm actually doing a gig in, I know it's not in the, in the, in the UK, but I'm actually doing a gig in Dublin, and the bill is me, Primal Scream, and the Happy Mondays. Oh, come uh, on, my head might explode. In, and, it's in the, and it's in the grounds of an old hospital, which is couldn't be more ironic, I don't think. Uh, which is going to be the most amazing night, because, I mean, I, I love Sean, uh, and I haven't seen him for a while, but to see... To hear all those great songs from Scream and Mondays oh, themselves is going to be a great night. How do you decide who goes where I, in a I'd, lineup like that? Um, I look. I let every. I you know. Somebody Please, tells me. Tells somebody you, says. Yeah. Somebody will present it to me, and I'll say, "Great, the Mondays, brilliant." Yeah. Then the Mondays are doing a couple of the gigs, and Johnny Marr's doing a couple, and Primal Scream are doing a few. So. Um, I'm looking forward to the summer. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. And then in the uh, then August, does it, well, hang on, December, Dece- yeah, all through December, you're on tour. You're at Wembley Arena. Um, you're up in Birmingham. You're in Cardiff, Leeds, Glasgow and Liverpool. Um, I'm thinking you're going to have to add more dates to that. Um, uh, that's not, pretty amazing. I'd, I'd, well, the, the outdoor gigs are pretty big and they're quite big. And then I, I'm, maybe there'll be some next year. I don't know, but we'll okay. see how it, we'll see how it goes first. Don't, I don't I don't really like overplaying places, if I'm being honest, okay. which is good. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> because, <laughs> which is I, handy. I love how candid you are. It's brilliant. Uh, we're going to play Jesse Ware. Begin again. Uh, check out Noel's uh, socials where you get your tickets. By the way, you might want to get them quick. Noel and I discussing our love of Jessie Ware there. Begin again. What a lass. Yeah, you she's great. Always run into her at Glasgow. Um, about 20 years ago, I was sitting at All Bar One at the back of uh, a certain department store in London. Noel walked past. I was like, is that for him, for real? He saw me looking and he just winked. Needless to say, it was my round all night and a story to tell forever. Well, six, six, three. That's all it takes, Noel, sometimes. Well, really. And actually, when I do wink, there's a little, like a flash of a diamond that comes out of the corner of my little, eye. Do you get that little right? bit of yeah. Yeah, Lint. I'm irresistible to women of a certain age these days. <laughs> <laughs> Perky nanas. <laughs> Perky uh, nanas, yeah. <laughs> uh, love the new song, says James in Chesterfield. I cannot wait for June the 2nd. Tickets already bought for the winter tour. Big up to Noel. Thank you. Oh, that's so good. It's so good to hear. The gang are very excited. Uh, Neve says, what annoys you most about your fans? Um, nothing, nothing, nothing in particular. The ones, the, actually, the ones that I meet are great. 
Um, and I do make a bit of time for them at gigs. I always go out after a sound check and yeah. they line up and I sign all the things for them. Nothing, nothing. The, the, the ones that you don't meet, there's some things that get written, you're just a bit like, really? But um, the ones that I meet are great, genu- genuinely, and um, there's nothing that annoying about them. They do have a lot of stuff to sign, though. That's kind of... Yeah. Are they outside there now to know when I leave? And it's just oh, like, really? Me. Like 40 CDs to sign? It's just not making <laughs> so many records. <laughs> exactly. And we must ask you this. Rumours you're in the new Barbie film. Can you confirm or deny? I am playing there? Barbie's uh, <laughs> younger, uh, older sister. <laughs> um, Bobby, Bobby. No, I, yeah, I was I was approached to play Ken, but uh, I didn't I didn't get the audition. Oh, I know. bless you. I know, yeah, oh, that, it's, it's over for me that's now in, the, I know. in Hollywood. <laughs> that's, yeah, the, that's the exclusive gang. We're going to finish the show with Waterloo Sunset. Uh, no, we're going to ask you a uh, little favour, by the way. Do you know, you know who Gary Davis? I do remember Gary Davis yes. from my youth. Yes, yes, exactly. You know his jingle. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hold that, hold that thought. We'll be back with you in mere moments. The Kinks, Waterloo Sunset. No, we've tried to play some tunes that you loved this morning. Oh, thank you very much. We could. Have you done a show on Radio 2, yeah? I did a stud in for, stood in for Dermot a couple of times. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. You should do more. Well, I've... The offer's there. I'm, yeah, uh, the I'm, I'm available at weekends. Helen will be calling <laughs> any minute now. Um, uh, thanks so much for coming to see us today. The album's beautiful, by thank the you, way. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, and it really does take you on it. I fully uh, uh, recommend sitting on the top of a du- double-decker bus when you Me listen too. to it for the first time. Me too. It's It's a lovely thing. Um, so thanks to Noel. The album Council Sky is coming out on June the 2nd, uh, but the single, out now, love it. Uh, and you can see Noel and the High Flying Birds here, there and everywhere over the next few months get your tickets quick um before we say goodbye just ask you how's the back by the way because the back had been uh, giving it's me some just jip. an ongoing thing i'm afraid oh, it's our age it's, it's not me. i've actually got I've actually hip. G- no i've got one leg shorter than the other oh have you should be in panto <laughs> that reminds me of a thing my dad used to say we say shut up or i'll nail your other foot to the floor did you ever hear that no that's just my dad anyway uh, bless you my goodness me um Gary Davis is coming up next. Right. You remember his show well. I do indeed. Um, back in the 80s, he's fabulous. He's a total legend here at Radio 2. We love keep and adore going, him. Keep going, I like it. Is he like there? Is he yeah, there? Yeah, can yeah, you yeah. hear this? Yes, yeah, he can hear this. Yeah. Um, hey, he used to be on Radio Manchester. Yes. Uh, Piccadilly. Piccadilly, Piccadilly Radio. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Oh, you're nitpicking now, mate. Yeah, I know. He's, he's particular like that. Michael Bublé, Paddy McGuinness, uh, many others have sung the Ooh, Gary Davis jingle. Noel Gallagher, it would be remiss of me not to ask you to do the honours. Okay. Okay, you ready for this, Gary? I'm ready. Hold tight, strap yourselves in. Ooh, Gary Davis. Ooh, Gary Davis. Ooh, Gary Davis on your radio. Amazing. Wow! Do you know what? That's the nicest the City fan has ever been to me. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Noel. Love you. Cheers. Thanks, though. Thanks, Noel.